hi, this is Joe again with another movie review. And today I'm going to be discussing the uh, 1984 film, Splash, starring Tom Hanks, uh, Dara Hannah, John Candy, and Eugene Levy. Of course, this is the movie that made Tom Hanks into, into a bona fide movie star. Because I don't know, uh, as well as Joe Hanna and John Candy and Eugene Levy. And also made Ron Howard into a legit uh, director. This is the first movie that Ron Howard directed that became a huge hit. <coughs> it also it was written by Barbara Mandel and Lionel Gantz, who know Ron Howard from his years on a little television show that he did called Happy Days. Because they were contributing uh, writers on Happy Days. <coughs> and he also wrote the, the screenplay for this film. And um, with this movie, in case those of you who have never seen it, and so it's Tom Hanks as a. Well, the movie starts off in Cape Cod, like 20 years before the movie, Post the Store. They were a pre log. Where Tom Hanks was in Cape Cod with his family, he fell off a ship. And he sees this little girl in the water, who happens to be a mermaid. Then you turn forward twenty years to New York City. Now Tom Hanks is in charge of this uh, food uh, market who, that that sends fruit out to various supermarkets and various food sellers and of course his brother's John Candy and he occasionally he, work, he works in the business and the business was started up with their father and of course Tom Hanks inherited the business and for some reason he um, gets the, uh, Tom Hanks' character gets a little depressed because his girlfriend just walked out on him was living, living together with his girlfriend his girlfriend moves out of his, of his apartment and of course, after a co-worker's wedding, he goes out to uh, Cape Cod and he gets rescued by this girl in the water who happens to be Dara Hannah. In the first quarter of the film, she doesn't even talk because she doesn't speak English. Uh, she doesn't even say a word in any language, really. And of course, what he doesn't know, what the audience does know, and Tom Hanks doesn't, was the fact that she, Dara Hannah was a mermaid. And of course, he finds the girl, girl and after he she rescues him, they instantly uh, fall in love together. And of course, after a while, she, she gets to New York City where he was because she finds his wallet, you know, at the, bottom of the, at the bottom of the ocean. And before that particular sequence, Tom Hanks meets, you know, the villain in the film, which was the Eugene Levy character, who plays a scientist who believes that roommates do exist, and he does find uh, Del Hannah in the ocean uh, while well, he's trying to find find uh, roommates in the in the water. It's gonna have something in my eye. Uh, so, so what uh, happened was. Uh, when Dara Hannah finds Tom Hanks' wallet, he swims all the way to New York, to specifically to Liberty Island. And of course, one of the screenwriters, I think Lionel Gantz, I believe, plays this tall guy. You know, he's in the hat and he's in the uniform. Giving this little crappy speech that he does about the Statue of Liberty. And then, of course, Dara Hannah walks out of the water, and actually, of course, she's naked, because you know she's mermaids are naked. And, of course, out of the water, the reason why she has legs is because one of the, one of the beliefs with mermaids is that they have legs out of the water, and they have fins in the water. And they, and they have this line in the movie. I think I reversed it, but, but they have this line in the movie. And, um, so she walks, so she's naked in the Statue of Liberty. So of course, when the tall guy see, sees this naked woman, she, he yells out, "Archie Balls!" 
And after that, we turned around and goes nuts. And there's this guy who has his arm around him and has like, and his buddy is taking a picture of him. Did you get it? Did you get it all? Did you get, you know, did you get a whole body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and everybody's going, of course, nuts. Just of course, she gets arrested. And of course, the cops found her on, um, but she had Tom Hanks' wallet with her. And of course, the cops contacted him, and, and that's how he finds her and brings her home. And of course, next week, because they have, you know, sex. You know, sex on top of the you really don't see sex in the elevator, and the sex on top of the refrigerator, sex on in the hallway, sex all over the place. And of course, there's one particular, one of the most famous scenes is when she, in the middle of the night, she goes into the bathtub. And of course, she fills up the tub of water, she puts salt in it, and she lays in there, and she calls friends. It's like one of the more iconic scenes. But, of course, like I said, most of the film, they don't have, they're not saying a word. Now, of course, when she's watching TV, she, Tom Hanks got kind of addicted to watching television. And, of course, she, she watches a, an old episode of the $10,000 Pyramid game show. And during one of the commercial breaks, she sees a commercial for Bloomingdale's. Which is like, can't, those of you who have never been to New York City, uh, Bloomingdale's is an iconic department store that's on 59th, um, no, 6, 60th Street and Lexington Avenue. And it's also on 59th Street, that's a big, big store, it's on the whole city block. And he says, oh, take me to Bloomingdale's. So you actually see her in Bloomingdale's, and then she does a boatload of shopping, she gets to the TV department. And she's watching, you know, all these TV com TVs. And of course, they show some iconic uh, television commercials. One in particular, of course, became pop was popular at that time, and became more popular because of the movie. And unfortunately, about like six or seven years later, the store went out of business, and that was Crazy Eddie. So of course, you have this guy who was an alma. I think the guy is still alive. Who did that commercial? He used to jump out on the screen like this. This is it. You know, he he, he jumps out like that, and he, you know, go nuts in his commercial. So of course, when he jumps at the jumps at the screen like this, jumps out at you. Now I have, of course, jumps jumps back, and, and that's of course that's when she learned, you know, English. Of course, we're getting back to the other story with Eugene Levy's character. He found out in the newspaper article. You know, that she, that she showed up naked at the Central Liberty. So he goes back to New York, he goes to the Museum of Natural History and in, in New York, which is also Manhattan, which is where, in the area where the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade starts. It starts in that area. West, West 77th Street in Central Park West in New York City. And it says, oh, this goes to Mermaid. And all the other scientists that are laughing at him say, oh, you can't prove that. Well, yes, I can. So he starts following her around New York City with a hose, or a bucket of water, first a bucket of water, then a fire hose, and trying to do all these crazy things to prove that she's a mermaid. Because he's trying to get her legs wet. And so you get her legs wet, she's going to show that she has a fence. So of course, that's eventually what he does. So, so, uh, down here she gets captured by his fellow agents and dumped off at the Museum of Natural History. And of course, he, Tom Hanks' character tries to get in to see her. And I can't get in to see her because of security reasons. And he tracks down Eugene, I don't know how in the world he tracks down Eugene Levy to the Stanis office. But you do have some physical comedy in the Stanis office to the point where he sticks his leg normal King because when he's in the dentist's office and Eugene Levy's character is because every time he tries to track down Donald Hannah's character he gets beat up by the same guy he gets beat up he gets his broken arm he gets his broken collarbone he gets chipped teeth I mean he really gets really physical in the film and of course Tom Hanks gets in the scene and they broke up broke around and of course he had this big chase scene from 77th Street and Central Park West down to downtown Manhattan, where she, of course, big shock, 
they and no spoiler. She she is they escape and he goes and Tom Hanks Kevin goes with her in the end of the film and that's how it ends. But in the film I thought it was a very good good film. I saw it recently uh as a matter of fact the day before I'm doing this video I saw the Cisco and Eber uh review of Splash and Roger Eber did not like this film. Because he preferred if the John Candy character played the Tom Hanks role. Because Tom Hanks played a pretty, like a straight guy. But remember, a straight guy, I don't mean sexuality and wise, I'm talking about playing a straight and not playing an over the top comedic role. Because it's supposed to be a, comedic, a romantic comedy, he plays it like a straight, a straight guy. You know, that, that he. Everybody puts the jokes jokes on him, uh, but I feel he did. Put, and he was now Tom Hanks was twenty eight years old when this movie came out, so so he, that's how that's how young he was. Now he's like over over. Uh, uh, I think it's about probably fifty eight this year. So that's that's how you know how old, how old he was at the time the movie came out. And like I said, that was the first movie that I saw any of these people in. And of course John Candy also did a lot of physical comedy with Tom Hanks. Of course the most funniest scene that he did was he playing like I think squash. A squash game with Tom Hanks. And they in this little cell I guess. They're playing squash. And John Candy says okay you're ready to play a game. I said you ready now? I said yeah. So Tom Hanks, so John Candy serves the ball so you ready? He said yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. So he serves the ball, the ball hits off the wall, and it hits John Candy on top of the head, and he goes down. That scene got like the biggest, biggest laugh. But, but like I said, this movie came out, it was a very successful, made a story by everybody. I like saw Tom Hanks, I like saw Dow Hannah, John Candy, uh, Eugene Levy, who was made Ron Howard into a, have over a 30 year career making movies. It was the next year, uh, Ryan Howard made Cocoon. Then he made, um, Fresh Reader makes movies like Backdraft and, of course, uh, Dangerous, uh, Beautiful Mind, and all these other big, big films. But, but this was the film that really started his career as a film director. And of course, with Tom Hanks, he made like four movies with Tom Hanks in 30 years. The next one was Apollo 13, they made uh, together with the Da Vinci Code, which I did a previous review on, and of course, Angels and Demons, which is a sequel to the Da Vinci Code. So that's my review of uh, Splash. Uh, please like my videos, please comment on, and, and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.